Welcome to Ask Kalefi, the podcast that dives into real-life problems that plumbing and HVAC technicians face in the field. We're your hosts from the Kalefi Tech Support Team. I'm Greg Tubbs. And I'm Dan Furkus. Welcome. We look forward to sharing some stories from our tech calls and using our background and expertise to make your days a little easier. And here we are coming at you from Kalefi headquarters here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. How you doing, Dan? Good. Episode two. I'm excited. Yeah. What are we talking about today? Well, today we're going to talk about air vents. Wonderful. So I got a question. Okay. What is, what is the purpose of an air vent? Well, Greg, an air vent is designed to remove air bubbles either manually or automatically from your hydronic system. I got okay. a question for you. What do you got? Air is good for humans. What's it not good for? Well, it's definitely not good for hydronic heating and cooling systems at all. That's a fact. Yeah, I mean, you get a little air in that system. If you don't have your fluid quality set up right, it can really wreak some havoc on it. It sure can. Yeah, air is air in a hydronic system is not a good thing. No, not at all. I got a fun fact for you, Greg. What's that? Did you know that Kalefi is the world's largest manufacturer of air vents? You know... I often wondered who was the largest manufacturer. Maybe I took it for granted that I work here and didn't realize that we are the largest manufacturer in the world. That was interesting. I see a lot of air vents in our warehouse. I see a lot of air vents leave our warehouse, take a lot of tech calls on air vents um, and applications for them, but didn't realize that, you know what, worldwide. I mean, this is, we we represent North America and Canada. Worldwide largest manufacturer. That's crazy. Yeah, sure is. Yeah, I mean, air vents are they're easy to recognize, aren't they? They're they're a, a single port device, um, one pipe connection, um, compared to an air separator, which is a a, a two port device. It's a multi pass device that incorporates not just an air vent but a coalescing mesh. Right. So big difference between the two. Big difference between the two. Similar end result. Air removal. Air removal. You know, yeah. you're right. I mean, air vent, you know, lo- single location where that air separator is a multi-pass device. So, you know, today I think it's great we're talking about air vents. I know we're going to come back at a later date and talk about separators. And we will. Guaranteed we will. So we have a lot of different products to remove air. Sure do. When we're talking air vents. Absolutely. They all kind of work the same, though. Yeah, the end result is the same. We're removing air from the system, but in location too. I mean, for the most part, you're locating an air vent in a similar location, no matter if it's a manual or a, an automatic. Yeah, actually, you can be located anywhere in a system. I mean, you'll see them at the top of boilers. You'll see them on the top of tanks. Um, you know, a high a high point and a riser. Sure, sure, and they're all. I mean. The automatics really consist of a handful of parts. It, when you look at it, if you, you cut it in half and look at it, you got a body, you got a float with a, a mechanism and, and a needle valve that vents, allows that, that air to vent out. Right, yeah, at the discharge port. Right. So let's talk about the types of products or the, the products that we have available for air vents. Yeah, boy, you look in our 2020 catalog, we're coming to 2021 soon, and we've got pages of air vents. We I mean, do. There's, have... there's a lot of different products, a lot of different features, a lot of different specifications. So yeah, I think it's great. We'll just take some time and walk through each one of the models and you know try to provide some, some information on them. Sure. Well, might as well start out with the good old reliable manual air vent. Yeah, start simple. Yeah, the 337. I mean, it's a sweet little vent. Typically, we see them Located on radiators, uh, ends of baseboards. Panel radiators. Panel rads. Um, I've even had guys call in and say, yeah, we love this vent for uh, uh, fan coils. Right. Yeah, I've seen them on fan coils. I've seen them on, um, I've actually even seen them at the end of manifolds. Sure. Makes sense. Yeah. I mean, it's a nice little manual vent. So, you know, manual being the key word. Manual vent means you're manually opening it. It's right. not automatic. Right. You grab hold of the knob, give it a turn, and uh, have your cup ready. But what's nice about that 337 valve is you can squeeze a little piece of hose on the end of that thing. Right. That sure is nice. Have you ever been tucked in a corner on a cast iron baseboard oh, with a 
old air vent that just has a little hole in it to let the air out. Yeah, you're trying to trying to catch that that water as it comes shooting out, and it may come dribbling out or it may come shooting out. You never know. It may come spitting out in little spurts. Right. Like that that. And, and you know you know that water is never very clean. Never clean. And it never fails. They have white carpeting. Yeah, white carpet or a white wall next to it. And you're tucked in the corner with a rag and a, and a boiler valve key just trying to, trying to get that air purged out and get that radiator to, to heat up. Yeah. So this is a, a really nice manual air vent for that. Yeah, that's really that. You, you hit it right there, that having that little tab on it where you can connect a hose and run down to a cup really can can make your life a lot easier absolutely so we go from there to our 5080 yeah the hydrocal yeah that's an interesting little product and we do get some confused guys that call in they we advertise it as is an automatic but a manual right so which is it first it's kind of like a hybrid the chicken or the egg i don't know it's like a hybrid <laughs> yeah it is a hybrid so what can you tell us about that? Well, it's nice because it, it it's exactly that. It's an auto air vent and it's a manual air vent. Sure. The automatic side of it um, has hygroscopic discs in it. And hygroscopic discs are a little waver, wafer that allow air to permeate through the disc. So it gives you that automatic air venting. But then the minute they come in contact with water, they'll swell up in a matter of seconds. I think it's like two seconds they swear up swell up to 50% larger than their original size, and that'll close off that port and prevent water from leaking. That's pretty cool. And there's a stack of these in there. There's probably 15, 20 of them, maybe more. Right, yep. And then what's nice about that, too, is that if that disc is swelled up and you're out there doing service, you can open them and put them into a manual mode and manually bleed. Sure, and that's just by screwing that valve in and that depresses the little check valve that's in there. Yeah. Once those discs swell up, Greg, will that thing ever work again? It will work again, but it may take some time. So we do get that question a lot too. Hey, how long does it take for these wafers to dry up for this thing to vent air automatically again? Yep. I had that question a lot. What's the answer you give them? Um, well, it, De- kind of depends on your system. I mean, it's interesting because I've often wondered that myself. You know, hey, you know, they swell up. They react within seconds. They close the the flow of water and air off. But you know what? Depending on your system temperature, that kind of determines how long it's going to take for that to dry out and go back into service. What was interesting is when I looked at it, you know, a low temperature system, you know, say 140 degree water, you know, you're going to be two and a half hours for that to dry out and go back into service. Wow. So then say it's a, a baseboard system or, or a cast iron radiator system where they're sending, we'll say 180 degree water at it. Yeah, that was interesting. At 180 degrees, it'll it'll go back into service in an hour. Wow. So the warmer the water, the quicker it'll evaporate and allow those discs to shrink back down and get you back into purging air exactly. automatically. Exactly. You know, but the, the one thing with those discs is that they don't last forever. No, no, they don't. Uh, I think it's a, a three-year lifespan really is all they have, you know, and which makes sense because if you have that thing set in automatic mode and it's constantly trying to vent and then it makes those those discs swell, then they, then they shrink back down again after drying out. It's a lot of cycles of... Yeah, over time they'll degrade. Yeah, yeah, or they'll get debris in them. Yeah, it's nice, though. We sell that replacement cartridge. Um, It's just a a simple replacement cartridge with new hygroscopic discs in it that allows you to go out and you remove the cartridge and you install the new one and you're back in service. Sure. Um, But what's the one benefit with our system? It's easy to change that cartridge. Yeah, the fact that we have a check valve in there, that's what's making this so much easier to take care of. Within seconds... You can unscrew that that cartridge that needs to be replaced, thread in the new one, no leaks, no worry. You don't have to depressurize the system and worry about fighting all that air back out and charging the customer a ton of money to sit and purge air out for just a little leaky vent or a a vent that just needs service. Right. Yeah, I mean, that check valve really saves you. I mean, we've both been in a position where we've been out and now maybe you have a manual air vent and the thing's been painted four times or or the... the, threads are stripped out and now you're stuck 
not being able to close that vent off. Right. So you need to replace it. And it's in a radiator with no check valve. So you're draining the system to change this $3 air vent. Right. Yeah. It's, it's a huge benefit, I think, for the service, service technician. So from the manual vents, we've got a ton of automatic vents. Yeah. But our base model is the RoboCal. Yeah. RoboCal is an interesting vent. I mean, that vent, you know, it, any, any of our air vents and any air vent on the market is going to have a venting capacity. And that, you know, the venting capacity is how much air it will vent, and it's it's rated in SCFM. Sure, SCFM. So what is SCFM? What does that mean for guys who go, I don't even know what that is. It's your standard cubic feet per minute of air removal. Okay, so it's it's the venting capacity. Right, right. Yeah, the higher the SCFM, the higher the venting capacity of that auto air vent. Sure. So you look at the RoboCal, again, interesting product. It's rated at 1.75 SCFM, so it's, it has good air removal capacity. Um, it's a sealed, economical, not serviceable device. So that product is is designed and built at a price point where, you know, it's robust. It's going to do a great job of, of venting air. It's going to be reliable, but at the point where maybe some debris gets stuck into it, you're not going to pull it apart and service it. It's going to be replaceable. Yeah. Cool fact about that particular air vent. Did you know that it is manufactured from start to finish? So right right from bar stock all the way to the manufacturing process of it, the testing and the packaging, it's never touched by human hands. It's all done by robots. That was pretty amazing. I didn't know that until we started putting together our our talking points. It was pretty interesting to learn that it was 100% built by robots. Um uh, you you think about that. I mean, you have an internal float and linkage and components. There's a spring in there that all need to be installed, and it's not never touched by human hands. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. What's the probably one of the biggest questions or most asked questions you get about that product? I probably get asked most about that plug on the side. There's a plug with a, an Allen wrench opening on the side, and I get the question quite a bit, you know, can, hey, can I open that up and use that as a venting port to do a, a, a side discharge? Yeah, I I recall getting that question quite a bit when I first started here. Yeah, that, and I always tell the guys, don't remove the plug. It's part of the manufacturing process. Again, being built by robots and machines, you know, they need an access point to access that body for, for production. Um, also has the spring behind it yeah so removing that is going to cause some issues with the the ability to vent right and that spring is actually tied to the top of the float and that's what allows that float to ride up and down so whatever you do don't remove the black plug right right that's not inside discharge part that's part of the manufacturing process cool so from from the robocal which is a real nice economical air vent we go to some of our more high end type yeah, air vents. A little more robust. A little more robust, more serviceable in the mini cal and the val cal. Right. Yeah. Very similar construction between the two. Yeah. The mini cal and val cal, uh, they are a serviceable, meaning you could actually unthread the cover that has the needle valve, the linkage, and the float attached to it and pull it out. And if it were to start leaking, you could actually run fluid by run fluid through it or air if you wanted to, to clean that guy out. Get in and clean any debris out of the needle. Yes. And clean out the body if need be. If there's a lot of debris from fluid in into that body, right. you'd be able to rem- re- remove that debris. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, very serviceable. And that cap's easy to remove. It seals with an O-ring, so it's not on there super tight. I mean, you don't need a, a ton of force to tighten it down. It, that O-ring does the sealing. Um, having that float in there... Uh, when that float rises, it'll create a little air pocket above it. So you shouldn't have the water coming in t- contact with the needle. It's when you get debris stuck in there that that water will rise up above the float and it'll leak. Right, right, because you're allowing a place for that air to go if there is debris stuck in the needle valve. Yeah. Have you ever had any contractors call you asking you about manually bleeding those? I have, you know, and... Yes, you can do that, but typically if you have to manually bleed it, chances are it's already done its job. If you're pushing it down and you're getting water right off the bat, you just remove that cushion of air above it. So then you got to worry about debris also following the water up. 
Right. Yeah, you'll get a piece of Teflon tape or a chunk of solder or you know, rust. A, rust or a wood chip or whatever above that float, and it can plug, it can hold that needle valve open just to crack and allow water to, to purge out of it. But you know what? Hey, like, like Greg mentioned, pull the cap off, clean it out, put it back in service. Uh, very simple to, to maintain. Yeah. What kind of uh, flows can we expect out of a valve like that? You know, it's interesting. So we we talked about the mini cal and the val cal. Yeah. You know, we lumped those two together, and we only talked about one design and construction, and that's really because they both share the same design and the same construction. The difference between the two is the mini cal is going to be rated to the one point seven five cfm of okay. air removal that we talked about with the robo cal. Sure. Um, but the val cal has a little bigger body and a little bigger discharge to where it'll remove up to 2.25 uh, SCFM of air. So Very a little, nice. higher, little higher capacity, a little better air removal. Sure, and that's probably going to be better suited to, you know, larger areas like maybe a, a boiler. Right. You know, removing air from a boiler quickly. Top of a storage tank. Top of a storage tank or a, a larger riser. Sure. You know, where the mini cal and maybe the robo cal would be more suited for smaller risers. A I've manifold. Seen manifolds. Yep. Yep. So that's that's where that product comes into play. Yeah, and good news, you know, we talked about the check valve in our 5080 for for servicing. Uh, we have inline check valves for both the Valcal and Minical that you can put into your piping, and then as you thread um, that air vent into it, it'll open it. You know, I get got a question the other day, Greg, you probably had this. What's that little metal tab that sticks out the bottom of the <laughs> air vent for? We got a, we get that question quite often, actually, between that and, and the black cap about the uh, Robocal. And that guy, that, that little steel tab that's sticking out of the bottom of our air vent, that's to depress the check valve. That's all it's there for. So don't take your tin snips and cut it off. <laughs> Leave it on there. Right. It's okay. It's supposed to be there. Yeah, that'll push that check valve open when you screw it in and allow that check valve to rise up and close when you remove it. You know, you, you can also put a small ball valve in below them, too, for servicing. Yeah, that's that's another common practice that some guys will do is uh, they'll put a ball valve in instead of a check valve if they have the room. But the check valve is nice. It's very compact. And, again, it's available for the RoboCal, the MiniCal, and the ValCal. Any type of safety cap for those, though, Greg? In fact, uh, there is. There's a couple of varieties of safety cap. I think probably the most popular one being sold is that that hygroscopic cap for sure. Yeah, and with and it's got those those little wafers in it, similar to what's in the fifty eighty. It's great for an installation where maybe it's it's put in in an area that you really don't water want water leaking. Say buried uh, buried in an unfinished area above the finished ceiling or maybe in a baseboard location yeah you know where you you don't want you don't want to run into a risk of that you know some debris getting into that the, that needle valve and causing right. that air vent to leak you got it i mean there's be nothing worse than having you know a manifold in a closet and all the hardwood floor around it or something and having that leak right so I mean, that the, might go weeks or or Months. Months without being noticed until it causes a bigger problem. Yeah, like a swollen wood, wooden floor. Yeah. Oh, you know, what's nice there. is those same hygroscopic discs that we talked about in the 5080. So it's going to swell within seconds. It's going to dry out within, you know, the amount of time it would based on your water temperatures and go right back into service. Will require maintenance, though. Again, like any hygroscopic disc, it's about a 36-month life. So, you know, keep in mind if you're using those caps, I figure about every three years you're going to want to replace them. You got it. So from there, we're going to go to the Discal Air. Yeah, the Discal. Discal Air shares the Discal name that our separators carry. Right. Um, uses similar construction on the float and assembly that our Discal separator uses. Yeah, that pinned float. That pinned float is pretty neat because it keeps the float centered in the body and really allows a maximum amount of air to, to flow around it and get out. Right, right. Yeah, it keeps that float and linkage in, in the proper spot to get the most air removal. Yeah, very efficient that way. Yeah, I mean, those are rated up to 4.5 SCFM. Sure, and those have a half-inch female NPT as of right now. Right. Uh, connection on the bottom of that brass body. Yeah, you know, and we talked about, you know, the serviceability of being able to remove the cap and clean the 
clean the pin and and put it back in service. But what's another nice feature we have for that, Greg? Yeah, the Discal Air gives you the ability to buy some replacement service parts. So we actually sell the cover and float. If you don't want to mess around with trying to clean out the cover or you can't, you just can't seem to get that piece of debris out of the needle valve, we have that as a replacement part where you can just thread the old one off and thread the new system on and away you go. Right. Yep. Easy to replace. You could, you know, take the old one and and throw it away or take it back, clean it out and put it back as a service part for future use too. Yeah. And they're, they're universal and that will also work with that hygroscopic safety cap. Yes, it does. So from there, we go to the big dog, the MaxCal. Yeah, the MaxCal is the big dog. We see that on a lot of our commercial products. We certainly do. Um, Very, very serviceable air vent. Um, Much larger capacity. We're looking at a a huge brass body, three-quarter inch female NPT connection on the bottom. And then on the top, we've got a three-eighths thread where you could put an adapter to go to quarter inch quarter inch copper or quarter inch quarter inch npt and what what guys will do is say this is put someplace where they want to be able to vent but they're worried about water getting out of it they don't want it running all over that nice new separator or they don't want it running someplace it shouldn't so then they're able to add that quarter inch npt by quarter inch compression brass fitting and go to copper and run that copper down as a drain line to a floor drain or someplace it's safe to drain drain right. the fluid. Yeah, to a different venting location. You ever tear one of the inside of these apart? I have, and it you know it's it's a nice construction. Six bolt cap, seven sixteenths nut. Pull the cap off. Um, there's an O ring that seals the top. Yep. But inside there's a stainless steel ball and linkage. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, so it's really a robust design, uh, easy to get in and and clean it out and then you know the the air vent the float has a sliding guide um spring steel mechanism and actually has a stainless steel um the stainless steel ball and linkage but then has a screen in it too for the for really? the outlet very cool so that kind of helps keep the bigger chunks out of out of that needle valve yeah it's a thin mesh strainer that just tries that that's in there to help keep that keep that discharge clean that's awesome do we sell replacement parts for that guy? That one we don't. No. No. You can actually get in. You should be able to get in and clean it out and put it back in service. Uh, being all stainless steel inside, you know, there's not a whole lot that typically will break down. Sure. So now that we've covered our bases on the product, how many air vents can you actually put in one system? It's kind of unlimited, you know, and you talk about our product, um, it might not be uncommon to see, you know, the max cal down in a commercial boiler room and, you know, maybe a val cal on top of a storage tank and a mini cal off the boiler or on a high point of a riser and a hydro cal out on a, on a baseboard in the system. I mean, you could see, or even our, our 337 manual out in the system. Yeah, and that's that's why we have so many different sizes because of the different SCFM ranges that might be required in, in different kinds of systems right. and the locations of them. Yeah, exactly. You know, the one question I get quite a bit too is about a domestic water system. Yeah, we uh, we do get that quite often. And I think the biggest question we get when it comes to the plumbing side of it is, hey, don't, don't you offer a air separator for plumbing? Yeah, for recirc line. Yeah, they're looking for a separator. Yeah, well, we don't have a separator, but we do have our air vent with our with our plumb vent. Yeah, we have a plumb vent available, so it's based off of the fifty twenty six. Yeah, the RoboCal, and it's made out of low lead brass, and it also incorporates the external threads to use the hygroscopic. Cap. Yeah, it actually comes with the hygroscopic cap. Yeah. It's it's a great little vent for plumbing risers. Yeah, so you put that at the high point of your riser. I mean, you can have multiple. Again, you can have multiple plumb vents in your system if you have multiple risers, or you know, in, even down in the mechanical space at a high point, you know, you might have a you know multiple risers tying together to a manifold and then piped up and over to back to the hot water heater, and you might have a, a high point where air keeps migrating. It's a great location for it. You got it. I mean. 
Yeah, that's where this valve shines is in plumbing systems and research. Um, I don't know how many times we had people calling in asking for an air vent for a research system because their customer, you know, would turn on the faucet and they would get a huge spit of air and then the faucet would spit a lot. Well, enter the plumb vent. Here we go. Exactly. And uh, I mean, to the best of my knowledge, I think we're the only one on the market with a low lead air vent. Yeah. I I don't see another product out there that's a low lead brass option. Right. So, yeah, I mean, a lot of different products available. You might, you might have a system that, you know, one, one of the products fits your needs or all of them. I mean, so we've, we've got a, a wide range of product to cover, cover your system. Yeah. And if you're really not sure, give us a call, drop us an email. We're happy to help you out. Yeah, absolutely. So what do you want to talk about next week, Greg? We're going to talk about air separators. Air separators. Didn't we just talk about that? No. Commonly confused with air vents. Air separators are a little more efficient at removing air from fluid. You bet they are. All right. So that's what we're going to talk about next week. Sounds great. I look forward to that. See you then. Thank you for tuning in. If you ever need help, please feel free to contact our tech support team anytime at techsupport.us at kalefi.com. Or call us during our business hours at 7.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Central Time at 414-238-2360.